You probably know what a tiny house is, otherwise I'm not sure how you found this channel, but I'm glad you're here. Hi, I'm Amy and welcome to my tiny house. This is Tiny House Big God, a channel where I share all of the details about how my dad and I built this beautiful DIY tiny house on wheels over the course of two and a half years. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out the tour that we gave. Now we're excited to announce that we are starting a new series called Nuts and Bolts where we give you the details about how to build your very own tiny house from beginning to end. I know a lot of you have been saying in the comments that you want to build your own tiny house or that you've actually already started the process. And in my personal life, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about what I learned along the way. Lucky for you, we took videos and pictures throughout our whole journey. So be sure to be checking in for nuts and bolts. In this episode, I want to talk to you about the very basics of what a tiny house on wheels is and what you need to know before you start planning out your own tiny house. You probably know what a tiny house is, otherwise I'm not sure how you found this channel, but I'm glad you're here. A tiny house on wheels is a house built on a trailer specifically made for tiny homes that is transportable. You can take it anywhere you want which is truly revolutionary for people like me who are in more transitory seasons of life. But because it's on wheels, there are some things to consider. A tiny house on wheels is built differently than a regular foundation tiny home. One of the biggest differences is that since it's gonna be flying down the highway, us tiny housers have to follow the rules of the road. Now, if you're like me, you probably haven't been taking a big load down the interstate before this process. So I had a lot of stuff I had to learn. The first thing I wanna talk about are the road regulations that you should know when d designing the dimensions of your tiny house. Number one, legal height. Because you're gonna have to drive your house under things like overpasses, there is a legal limit of how tall your house can be. Now this varies a little bit from state to state, but my understanding is that most of the continental United States have a law that says your tiny house cannot be any more than 13 and a half feet tall. So that means not the actual height of the house, but from the pavement to the uppermost part of your house. And I have heard stories of state patrol measuring your house with an extremely long tape measure, so you should definitely abide by the rules. In fact, I encourage you to give yourself some wiggle room and plan for a house that's maybe 13 foot four just in case. Now, I've heard, not in my state, but I've heard that there are a few other states that do allow for 14 foot tall tiny homes, which if you decide you're never gonna probably move your house, yeah, maybe you could gain another six inches of height, which would certainly help your headroom in the loft but you should really consider the implications of that. It's gonna be pretty challenging for you to get permits to move a house that is 14 feet tall in states where that is beyond the legal requirement. Another thing is, let's say for some reason you did get permits, that is gonna still make it very challenging for you to actually move your house because a lot of the overpasses are going to be too short for your house to fit under. So I encourage you to go do your own research on that. I am no zoning or road law expert, so you'll have to check that out for yourself. The second thing that you should consider is the legal width of your home. So the legal width of homes, and I believe this is pretty standard all across the United States, is eight and a half feet. This is to keep your house within a lane of traffic, which is actually kind of funny I think about that sometimes like oh I live in a space that fits inside of the road <laughs> sort of funny now you might have seen that there are some people that are making bigger wider homes even up to 10 feet wide and a lot of those people know that they have no desire to really move their house so they're going to go ahead and apply for an oversized permit whenever they do decide to move their house from place to place 
Now again, you should consider this carefully before you make that decision. Number one, the bigger the trailer, the more it will cost. And we're gonna talk more about trailers in another episode. But number two, if you have a wide load on your house, that means that for every single state you move your house through, you are going to have to do the paperwork and pay the money for an additional permit to go through that state. For my house, it traveled through probably five or six different states, which means that would multiply the amount of time and effort and money you'd have to pay to be able to move a wide load that far. Some people say, totally worth it. For my purposes, I knew that I would be moving my house a little more frequently, so I decided to not worry about that. In fact, I actually kind of like my house the way it is. I don't think I would want a 10-foot house. Another thing that you should consider with the width, this is really important and almost bit us in the butt, actually, is that that width is everything about your house. So for my particular trailer, it is eight feet wide on the actual trailer but you have to consider all the layers of your house. So the framing is gonna go to the edges of the trailer. Then you're gonna have to add your sheathing, either zip boards or plywood or OSB. You're looking at another half, three quarter inch at that point. Then you need to add your siding. How thick is your siding? Probably at least another half inch. Then you need to think about all your trim around your windows. That's probably another half to one inch maybe three quarter, and then the, here's the big kicker. You need to think about your roof and your eaves. Now on a traditional home, when you build a roof, the roof goes out past the home a, a good bit for a lot of reasons. One of those reasons is that it protects the siding of your house from getting direct impact from weather like rain and sleet. When rain goes straight on the siding, it rots a lot faster, it gets dirtier a lot faster, and it provides presents you with a lot more upkeep that you have to do as a homeowner. Now, eaves on a tiny house get challenging because we don't have a lot of width to work with. Another thing is your roof, especially my roof is a metal roof, I had to have, I believe it was an inch or so of margin of the roof to go past the decking so that the water, when it dripped down off the roof, could then have space before dropping. If you'll ever notice when you pour water down a surface, sometimes it sort of hangs on to that surface on the under underside before it actually drops down. You have to account for that because water is the enemy of construction and wherever it can get in, it absolutely will. So you need a good bit for your roof. Why am I saying all this? Well, that's the kind of stuff that you can consider as you're considering how wide of a trailer to buy. I was under the impression as I was building my house that because I would like to collect rainwater on my roof, I was going to add gutters to my house. You don't usually see gutters on a tiny house, but I wanted to do it. And I wanted to do it all the way through a lot of this process until I realized something. I can't do that because my house is on an eight foot wide trailer and there is no wiggle room by the time you account for all the sheathing and trim and siding and roof overhang. So I'm sad to say I do not have gutters on my house. I wish I did. If having gutters is something that is really important to you, then you should consider getting a trailer that is slightly narrower in order to accommodate for the dimensions of your gutter. The third thing that you should consider is the weight of your home. And we'll talk more about this when we do the trailer segment, but your trailer is going to come with a legal limit on how much weight you, it can carry. You absolutely should make sure to not build a house that is heavier than the weight capacity of your trailer. The reason is because a lot of us tiny housers have to register our tiny homes as RVs or travel trailers or just utility trailers with our local DMV. The DMV wants to ensure that you are having a, a piece of equipment that is roadworthy. If your house is heavier than the weight capacity of the trailer, then your house is not roadworthy, which is a major problem. So please keep that in mind when you are thinking about how big your house is and how heavy it's going to be. Another thing that you should consider is where can you put your house? I get this question a lot and it's pretty complicated. It's very nuanced and you're definitely gonna have to do some research for your own locale. 
But here are different things to consider. What is zoning? Well, you probably know, but zoning are a set of ordinances that exist in each area that are usually for the purposes of keeping that area clean and tidy and a place where people actually want to move there. Some places in some states are very strict about zoning. In fact, the place where I grew up, every single property has a zoning classification attached to it that you can find out through going to the city. And you have to go work within the confines of whatever the rules are for that zoning. So if it's in a residential area, then you have much stricter rules than if it's out in the country, usually. That's just one example. In those environments, it can be pretty challenging to find a place that is tiny house friendly because all of the zonings have different rules associated with them. So how do you figure out where you can put your house? Well, here are some things to consider. There are state rules, there are county rules, there are city rules, and there are neighborhood or HOA rules. So state rules, county rules, city rules, and HOA or neighborhood rules. As a great rule of thumb, you would probably imagine this, but the strictest rule is the one that will be enforced for you. Now, typically in my experience, I've noticed that if you live within city limits, you probably have way stricter rules than if you live in an unincorporated area. So let's say that you lived in city limits and your county was saying, absolutely no problem, you can live in a tiny house. But then your city said, we do not allow tiny houses in city limits. Well, unfortunately, that means that you would not be able to live in a tiny house in that area. Same thing for your neighborhood. Let's say you even live within city limits and it's totally fine for you to be in a tiny house. But once you get to your neighborhood or your HOA, they have an issue with there being a tiny house in the neighborhood. Well, then you're gonna have to follow the strictest rule, unfortunately. So how do you even find a place for a tiny house? Well, part of that depends on how your tiny home is being considered in the legal language. There are some ways to um, find different interpretations for what your tiny home is, and you can get creative with that, but here are some things to consider. There is a big difference between a foundation tiny home and a tiny house on wheels. Once you put your house on wheels, in most situations that I've seen, it's considered an RV or a travel trailer. This can be a great thing, or it could be an unfortunate thing, depending on where you live. Some areas that I've seen will allow a tiny house because they consider it an RV. However, they will not allow you to live in an RV full time. So that's something to be aware of. Other places will allow you to live in an RV, but they will require you to move it every certain number of days. So you will have to ask yourself, do I have a vehicle that can move my house and am I willing to move my house every certain number of days? Now, some places have absolutely no problems with you living in an RV, like where I live, which is why it worked out. So I ended up having my house on some friend's property and much to my surprise, after coming from very strict zoning, where I live now actually has no zoning. No zoning, it's amazing. Now, if I lived just a few miles away within city limits, then I would not be able to live in my tiny house. But because I live outside of the city and they don't mind RVs, full-time living in RVs, then I'm fine. So that is a potential option for you and that helps explain why so many tiny housers live out in the boonies. <laughs> Another thing that you can consider doing potentially is looking at some of the rules about foundation tiny homes. I talked with some tiny housers that said that they were able to get around some of the zoning rules by blocking up their house on cinder blocks and kind of putting it on a sort of foundation. And the county was okay with that. So you might be able to use foundation house rules uh, if you're able to do that with your home. But that's something, again, that you'll have to live it, uh, look at. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is that there is a lot of zoning coming out about ADUs. And ADU stands for Accessory Dwelling Unit. And it's typically foundation, um, and it's found even in the middle of cities, I've, I've noticed. And it's usually a tiny house. On foundation, it's perceived of as a mother-in-law suite or a pool house or something along those lines. 
I've noticed more and more locales are okay with the ADUs. So that might be an opportunity for you if you're not interested in moving, but you still wanna build a tiny house. So I hope that all of these suggestions will help guide you as you start thinking about what kind of house you wanna live in and how big you want your trailer to be. I wish you the very best of luck as you start your journey. Tune in next time for Tiny House Big God. Oh,